Guys, this is Chad, founder of Battle Warrior Brands and the creator of the You Are More movement. For any updated news or any updated episodes, please visit BattleWarriorBrands.com or go visit Apple iTunes or Spotify today. Once again, guys, thank you for this recent download, and here's your brand new episode today. Hey guys, welcome to the Battle Warrior Podcast. We have, I'm going to look at the whole list and just say a real, real blue collar good brother here on the other side of the line. Um, welcome to the show here, Ron Nussbaum. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. We have a whole list of stuff we can go through here, man. And, and, and I'm just reviewing everything and I'm like, damn, he's just like me. No, except for the Marine part, but like the Marine entrepreneur, blue collar boy, um, from what it sounds like, grows up, grew up in the Midwest and yeah. uh, CEO of Nutness, man. <laughs> so like, and we we're just talking about personal development and it was prior to recording here, guys. And I'm just like, yeah, we're going to have to play it just because for the reason is we already started talking about go some like i opened up i'm like dude i'm training for a marathon we gotta hurry up and you're just like, <laughs> but um just in general like we started talking about goals dreams pushing our bodies breaking our bodies down he's doing live hard i'm not doing 75 hard yet but it's on my list to do um we're just different tiers of personal development 50 books a year you're reading um so just kick this off, man. What got you, what was the first original thing to change that direction? Uh, I don't, it, it's hard to pinpoint one specific time, you know, you just eventually make the decision that this is who I am and I'm going to go be who I am. And if people don't like that, then I guess they're not going to like that. And that's what you got to do. You just got to go out and live your best life. It might seem cliche, but I, I was raised around entrepreneurship and self-development and that stuck. Now in my early years, I wasted a lot of that away doing dumb things. But once I got in the Marine Corps and I started finding some direction in my life, I went right back to that and was like, this is the core. We have to continue getting better as a person or you just stay where you're at. Uh, when you talk blue collar working, I mean, I started over a decade ago in the construction industry as a foreman out in the field and was able to work my way into a production manager, operations manager uh, with about a hundred people that reported to me. So that's all development and saying, hey, this is what I'm going to go do. I have an end target in mind and just going and getting it. And not being happy if you don't. Yeah, you're you're pretty much well in the same way as me. Uh, the only difference is growing up, uh, my blue collar experience growing up is is millwork family. So like my parents were, you know, growing up around a lot of mill workers, a lot of union stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The thing about is, and this is what gets me pissed now. Not saying now looking this, but me looking back of saying, why didn't I not learn this earlier? Because if I, there are certain situations in, in, in our entrepreneurship journey, there's like little tests that kind of happen in your life that kind of, and not say events, but like, you know, what the heck is this Shopify thing? And then a few years later, you're obviously like me, you're running a Shopify store. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is, you know, back in college, I'm 36, but that's what, you know, almost 20 years ago, web page design. And all of a sudden now you're looking at is, okay, now I'm in marketing, now I'm in sales, now I'm in this. And, and all of a sudden now, you know, 20 years, almost 20 years out of high school, college and all that stuff, I'm looking at going, I simplified my everyday work job so I can preserve my energy and put it into my business. I can put it into this stuff, not say side hustle, but everything that fires me up is after three o'clock and it shouldn't that it guys, it shouldn't be that way, but that's what it is right now on my schedule. Yeah. I don't, 
I don't think it's about looking back necessarily and saying, why didn't I think about this sooner? Why didn't I, you, we can do that our entire life and just keep going down that rabbit hole. I think it's more about looking into the future and what can be and where are we headed and what are we going to do about the, the, so you step up to the plate so many times in life. And you have an opportunity to hit a home run, a grand slam, a base hit, or strike out. You only get so many opportunities to do that. And if you're sit, standing there thinking about all the times you struck out or hit a base hit, you might miss that ball that comes through that's that grand slam. So in my mind, I'm always looking forward. I, I, don't, I try not to get hung up on anything that's happened. And that's hard. That, that really is hard because that stuff will eat away at you. But it only eats away if you let it. If you if you create something new, something that's even better or more exciting, you just forget about it. That's a little blip in the radar. Uh, my one of my my co-founder Jared Yellen, I love how he puts stuff. Is that most stuff that happens is a sentence in your book? And the overall thing of if you wrote a book about your life, most things that happen are just a sentence in that. And you can't let that sentence dictate what the next five chapters are going to be. Yeah. And coming from a person that is an author. Yes, I totally get that. <laughs> um, no, and, and we look at this and, and I'm going to future date now, guys. Um, looking at expanding our mindset, expanding what is normal, um, even though you know, at times we, we elevate ourselves up, we reach back and elevate people up with us. Um, but the thing that I want to get to first is expanding what is normal. And I'm going to say normal is what is normal where I'm at in America, Midwest, whatever, versus what is normal in Dallas, what is normal in Houston. I already know I'm not normal because when we start doing self-development, pushing ourselves, you know, busting our butts, breaking our bodies down, we're already actually the 1%. But the the normalness of expanding, okay, and I'm going to use this for example, a cigarette, you know, like a, a center console bolt down in Florida, normal is three to five engines in the upper Midwest. It's one engine total. So for me, it's how do you continuously level up and just keep raising that? Hey, this is awesome. Hey, this is normal. This is where I want to go. So from my perspective, my goal is to be not just the 1%, that the 1% of the 1% and just push it to the absolute limit. Uh, I went, I think you have to completely evaluate your life. And I say that from the perspective of that is what I did a few years ago, where I, I was what you would consider, most people would say, good job, good family, good living that American dream, that what people want. And I was miserable. I mean, I hated my life. I was out of shape. I, I smoked. I drank. I, I did. It, I was miserable. Like it, it was. It was horrible. So I looked at it as, what do I have to do to take myself to the next level? If I got to where I am right now by just treating myself like crap, where could I be if I didn't do that? So I started looking into that, making decisions based on that kind of stuff. The books weren't enough. I needed something that was going to continue to push me to the next level. That's where I, I three years ago, went completely plant-based because a lot of athletes were doing that. And I, I'm thinking of this from a straight performance deal. That, there's nothing else. All I'm doing is making decisions on how can my body run the most optimum it possibly can. Is this a lifelong decision? Probably not, but right now it's working. It's continuing to get me where I need to go. So I then got into 75 hard. I quit drinking a couple years ago because I was like, this does not get me to my end goal. So I think you have to understand where you want to be at and then have to understand the sacrifices that you're going to have to give up to get there and then just go do it. And then if you're not interested in the sacrifices, change your goal or, you know, enjoy your life. That's, that's the options. And I I'm enjoying my life more now than I ever have, uh, in a long, long time. I mean, we, I just, I moved from Michigan to North Carolina 40 days ago. We sold everything, sold our house, packed up, 
and moved down to North Carolina because we wanted to be where freedom and sunshine was. And this is the place to come for that. Uh, that's what I believe. Let me tap into that because I just came back from Houston two weeks ago and text. Okay. And I'm going to say it this way, that the States that are alive and I'm going to say alive, like people are just gracious. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You could feel you're an entrepreneurship world. You can, you could tell the city, I don't want to say the people, but in general, like the fire is so strong, the city's on fire. Um, what is the, I don't want to say what is, but how can you tell my listeners that are in a local community, small community, whatever it is that what happens to your life when you just get dropped, like chase, not say chase, but like get attracted and physically know you need those areas in your life. I, I your everything changes. The moment you start to commit to that kind of stuff and you start pushing the boundaries, your, your mind opens up, your mindset starts to shift things that were not achievable before or weren't even on the radar start to become on the radar like you're you're getting ready to run a marathon now what has become on my radar in the last couple of years so i go out i like to go out to arizona and try to go out there uh once a year and that got me into going up camelback mountain doing some hiking some mountain climbing uh so now the most craziest thing happens is everest comes on my radar and I'm thinking, I think I want to go do this. But that would have never happened if I wasn't putting myself in a position where I was open to that kind of stuff. And who knows if I ever go do that. So if that's even meant to be. But right now, I, I'm feeling a push that way. And there's a, there's a reason for that. And that would have never happened unless I would have been willing to commit to the small things that have gotten me to where I'm at right now. Yeah. And the thing about that I'm looking at is if let's say you start training for it and you climb five, six, seven mountains and hypothetical, let's say it doesn't happen. We're going to say it that way. I'm going to go with negative Nelly here for two seconds. <laughs> you still like guys, you, yes. End goal is Mount Everest. I get that, but look at what you accomplished by climbing seven mountains. It, it, it just, it's, it's just taking these goals and, and just putting all the risk you need to put into it to go achieve it well that but that's that's what ends up happening is as as you continue to develop the goals get bigger and bigger and those those goals that you originally set out with they just get hit and it's like a drop in the bucket at that point in time because now you're on to the next big thing what or not necessarily the next big thing i hate to say it like that because then people think oh you're just constantly always moving on to what the next shiny object is but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about your focus shifts to where you're actually supposed to be going and you want to be able to be on that road without going after the stuff that you want and for me it's freedom clarity spirituality and uh fitness or fits whatever fancy fit so you that one of the reasons that i went like okay so from performance is one of the reasons i went plant-based one of the reasons i stopped drinking was for clarity because i was like I'm, I'm foggy like i'm not I, i'm not as clear i was i felt like I, I was headed in the right direction but i didn't have the clarity that i needed and by giving that up, I, uh, after a few weeks, I had the clarity that I couldn't even imagine. And then I started 75 hard in that right there. That would give you some clear clarity that would start to put things in the right perspective for you. And that, that was, that's coming up on a year ago because next month I'm going to start phase three and hopefully be able to complete the live hard cycle. I mean, I'm going to, it, it's, it has to happen at this point in time. If it don't happen this year, I'm going to be right back on 75 hard working on the live hard cycle in 2023. Yeah. And when we're in the cycle of achieving great things, it doesn't matter, man. Like we can go like for me and I don't want to say, you know, six hours or more sleep. I don't like I'm five, six at most. And everyone's like, well, how do you, do, don't you ever go to bed? I'm like, yeah, like I do, but I have things I love to do. I'm wide awake till 1030 at night. I wake up at four in the morning, if not midnight, depends on what time it is. 
I'm fulfilling my life. I'm wide awake. I love what I do. Yeah, I, I think people have a hard time getting out of bed because they don't want to get up and do what they have to do for the day. And people like to go lay in bed because that's the way out. And I've never been a good sleeper. It just inherently comes like just my mind is just going and going and going. So laying down to get some sleep that it, it's all about for me is it's what your body needs. I don't, I, I want my body to feel like I'm running at peak performance uh, all the time. That That's the bottom line. And that, that is, that's a amazing spot to be in, man. Let's, let's jump into your, your new business that you're running here because I'm sitting there going, I'm like, that's a phenomenal name. So, uh, explain to my listeners or vice versa. Let's tap into that and, and, uh, explain what's your business. So, so I'm the CEO and founder of Nut Nest and what we do is so after 11 years in the construction business, and working in all different multitudes of that. What I heard all too often was, hey, we love you guys. We love you. We love your crews. But your communication sucks. And I, there's got to be a better way. I, I had this in my mind that there has to be a better way. So that's where Nut Nest came out of, is how do we help contractors, home service providers, builders communicate with their customers? 95% of complaints in the construction industry are all from communication. And what we have done is we have built a platform where we streamline all of that, where customers can talk directly to the right person at that company every time on every project and get that answer. We want one cost solutions. One of the problems is, is that when that person comes out to your house, you move forward, get some work done. They're going to do your kitchen. That guy leaves. Most of the stuff that happens after that project, that's not the guy that's going to be able to answer those questions, but that's the only number you have. So with the NutNest platform, we can direct that. We're, we're like air traffic control. That's the best way I can describe it is we're air traffic control for customers to contractors. If somebody has a question about scheduling or who's going to be out at my house or payment, anything like that, they're going to reach out to the right person at that company. It's going to be able to give them the, the answer to their question the first time, which is going to stop all the miscommunication, which will stop customers from being unhappy because they want to be happy. And contractors want to deliver an ex excellent experience. It just gets all mumbo jumbled up when you're talking, you have iMessenger, WhatsApp, email, phone calls, Facebook Messenger, all this stuff comes into play. Next thing you know, nobody knows what's going on. And you have a, a, a level five customer that's losing their mind. And you got to be out there on a Sunday to fix the situation. That's what we're stopping. That's absolutely brilliant, man. And I'm just saying it that way because in my mind, I'm like, you know, the I have a lot of friends in the construction industry in general. And I'm like, they're on phone calls all day long. And this person dealt with this person and this, uh, you know, self-employed person's dealing with this W2 person and you're in it, man, you get it. I'm like, if someone can just access like what you're talking about and say, okay, Hey, you know, toilet was done by this guy. Boom. Here it is. Yeah. And what, not only can it be used for contractors to work with their subs on what that looks like as long and with the, with the homeowner is we've created a, a project feed. So think of like a Facebook feed or an Instagram feed that is project specific to what you're having going on. So say your kitchen's being worked on, you can go on there, see the updates, see the contact that you've had back and forth, any pictures, who's at my house, when somebody's showing up, that stuff's all there live. So you know exactly what's happening, whether you're in that house, across the street, in town at a hotel during this, or you're across the country because it's a rental property. Uh, we allow that access and provide that transparency. And I, in my mind, I'm actually looking at it going as the wholesalers and the flippers and all that stuff too, when they're wholesaling 30, 40 houses a month. That it's a way to manage your team. 
Yeah, it's it's absolutely brilliant here, man. And and where can everyone find you for the information, or or where can we? Yeah, let's just say it this way. Yeah, so where are you spread around, you can, man? Yeah, you can find me on Insta uh, on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, RonWesley.com, NutNest.com, and then Ron at NutNest.com is my email address. Uh, super easy to get a hold of me. I'm here. I am. Real, I'm open to connect and talk about anything anybody wants to talk about that we can help progress people forward, go chase them dreams. That's what I'm here to do. And I'm going to answer it this way and, and ask the question, was it worth moving to North Carolina? Absolutely. I've been here for, for, I've been here for 40 days and it's absolutely worth it because that that's part of that transition of you have to central, you have to locate yourself self to where you want to be at we yeah. made the decision that i have a four-year-old son we want to be by the ocean and we want to rate we want to be somewhere where it's nice all the time and we want to have somewhere where we can raise our son that excites us and that's why we moved i'm an all in kind of guy if you haven't gotten that picture so far uh with some of the stuff we talked about that that's what it comes down to and the opportunity presented itself where i was transitioning from what i was doing before in the nut nest for time and it just made sense like why are we going to stay here in michigan why don't we just go live down by the ocean and enjoy our time off and that's what we do and from a person that just came from the ocean two weeks ago i completely agree <laughs> and i completely agree with the beach i'm also a mountains guy so i'm kind of torn in between of which way i'm going to go here well so. i mean we have the smoky mountains not far from here uh there, there's some mountains around North Carolina. And there's a friend that just moved to Asheville, North Carolina. Oh. So I'm seeing some of the pictures of the mountains <laughs> in the background. So I totally get yeah. it. <laughs> so thank you, man. Um, thank you for coming on the show. And I look forward to seeing what's going on with the business going forward here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Anytime I can do anything, feel free to reach out to me, man. I'm here to help. All right. Absolutely, man.